Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is the second in my new series called Whatever Happened To that I accidentally started the other day. The first one was Whatever Happened To Joe Casada. That one did okay-ish, but it's mainly because Joe Casada's time as an artist is actually like 20 years back, and I think most people, like, they don't even really think of him as an artist. They think of him as an ex-editor-in-chief from like 10 years ago, but yeah, he had a very good art career. Um... So the second one is on uh, Eric Larson, and I've got to tell you. Oh, just a little sidebar. For some reason, my last two videos that I uh, recorded but not uploaded because I'm scheduling and I got members, and so, uh, there were no comments. They weren't blocked. Just every single one went to review. But it's only on two, so that t tells me some sort of, you know, server error somewhere. So I, they should be good. Um, but I'm actively, like, searching the... Held for review is just usually people using, like, a ridiculous amount of curse words. So I, I barely ever check it. It's just like, um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm just going to check that and just, you know, approve them to get them out of there. So having done this for, jeez, is it coming on three years? Wow, I'm three months away from three years of doing this. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It can be crazy. But honestly, sometimes it just feels like work. And I've got to say, reading these two comics... It's probably the most fun I've had reading comics in years. Um, I've read both of these issues probably a dozen times. I think I've bought both of them like four different times. There's, I don't move a lot and deployments, military, all this stuff. And I would just lose comics all the time. So I was constantly like rebuying old comics. And, you know, anything from the 90s where there was massive numbers of, of prints, there's a ton of, you could always find copies of any, you know, early 90s books, because they're, they were printed in the millions. Um, so uh, I have got to say, okay, so one thing did jump out at me. You have issue two and issue three. And uh, it's the dragon's face from basically the same angle. That's a that's a huge no, no. Um, but it's one of those things you only really notice when you like put them next to each other. So anyway, um, real brief, there were a bunch of very popular artists at Marvel in like 90, 91. Uh, comics were really like blowing up and they they felt like they're blowing up because of us, because of our art. So they tried to negotiate better deals at Marvel. They didn't get them. So they're like, Marvel was like, no, you're good. You know, we'll raise your rates, but you know, you, you got to do your time. You got to do this. And they didn't want to do the traditional system. So they started Image. Image was not one company. It was kind of just like a brand and everyone had their own companies but they had also had these agreements and there there's some crazy stuff that happened um uh it's it's so funny how rob liefeld has like kind of like re what is that word rehabilitize <laughs> what is that word when people like get out of jail and you're trying to, to reintroduce them to society um but he was like like a black sheep for like 10 years because uh, you know, he was a young guy, and he, it sounds like he, business, especially selling in the millions, kind of went to his head and overwhelmed him. But there was a lot of behind-the-scenes fights, and sometimes publicly. Um, but so they, they all started their books, and some of them, like, I mean, like, Mark Silvestri basically just redid X-Men, as Jim Lee kind of did, too. But um, Eric Larson redid a character that he had had, you know, uh, since he was like a kid. Um, and he had done it at another indie book called, you know, The Savage Dragon. And I've got to say, you know how I just said that, like, not a lot of people watch the Whatever Happened to Joe Quesada because people didn't, don't even really think about him as an artist primarily. Um, Eric Larson is a weird one because people seem to be aware of him since he's on Twitter all the time. But you just, you don't, how would I describe him? He's like one of those older actors like Joe Don Baker. Like, you've seen him in a million things, but you don't really know if he's ever starred in anything. Um, uh, but anyway, um, he used to be a big deal. In fact, one of the things that I kept thinking throughout this is that, and you're going to see it especially in this one, is that there is like, I would say Eric Larson is one of the most kind of like tragic losses of a career because he started so promising and now he's basically just you know how when you read papers they have the asterisk but they also have that thing that looks like a cross 
Like that's basically what he is. He decided that the most important thing to do is with his career was set the record for the most consecutive issues of a series. What? Who cares? Nobody cares. And he has done that to the point of grim death. Savage Dragon, which started selling in the millions, is now at about 3,500. And probably would have been canceled if he wasn't. I think he's the CFO of uh, Image to this day. So uh, the other things I'm going to say about Eric Larson, because I followed him for decades, and not to be that personal, but especially interacting with him on uh, Twitter and I think Facebook, he's one of those guys who's a little off. You can never quite peg what it is. Is he got, you know, maybe like uh, a little autistic, maybe a little Asperger's, but like he fixates on things. And um, I got to say, you know, he's like a real extremist to the left guy. Uh, right now, but you had never guessed that. Like, this is like just normie fare to a T. So he he had a, a short run on Credible Hulk, um, then he was on Amazing Spider-Man, then he was on Spider-Man writing, and that's when I really noticed him. He also had a thing where he had a fire. His whole house burned down, and it sounded like he effectively lost every single thing he owns. Now, if you live in like current year, or maybe you're like 20, you know, because of, you know, uh, you know, good networks for 911 and better construction and better, you know, inspections of housing, like, it's pretty rare for there to be a fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but growing up in the 70s and 80s, that would just happen. You just come to school. So, so-and-so's house burned down. And it wasn't like a mob thing. It wasn't like an insurance thing. It was just poorly constructed, like, uh, you know, appliances, you know, kitchen appliances and things like that. Bad wiring. Um... Uh, and, uh, so that used to be a lot more common, but even this was, this happened somewhere in like in the early, uh, nineties and it was becoming less common even then. So it was quite shocking. Like just everything you have gone, burned down to the ground. Um, so what happened is that there was actually a note about this in one of the issues of Spider-Man. It's like Eric Larson's, uh, uh, you know, house burned to the ground and that's why, his art style is more sketchy. And then after he recovered, he kind of went back to his more detailed uh, style. But then after like a couple years on Savage Dragon, he started getting really, really sketchy and sloppy, essentially drawing in ink. Um, and he stayed that way for the most of the last 15 to 20 years. And it's just, it's basically destroyed his reputation. Like you look at his book and it's just sloppy crap. It's a bunch of talking heads. It's I wouldn't, it's not as political as his social media, but it's, it's fairly political. Um, and it's just a track. Okay. So let's just jump right into it. So this, out of all the image books, even though I love Wildcats, especially later on where, where you got Alan Moore, uh, writing it, um, Scott Lobdell, and I think James Robinson had a good run as well. Um, this one was out of the gate good and probably the best of the, uh, image books, even above uh, Spawn. So we start off here and um, he's become a cop. Uh, one of the things that uh, always bothers uh, Eric Larson is when you talk about Savage Dragon being a cop and he was like, that was the first two and a half years of the book. Savage Dragon hasn't been a cop since like 1996, <laughs> but um, that's when most people bought the book. Um, uh, so uh, we would just get, you'd, you'd get this very comic booky like classic superhero double page spread of this you know gnarly uh villain called arachnid one of the things that was just absolutely amazing about savage dragon the first two years is like i would say even more i mean rob liefeld was a real font of new characters at marvel but then his young blood was they were kind of trash um but like I'm, I'm actually kind of like flustered when I'm thinking about it. Eric Larson could come up with five new characters and new designs every single month in Savage Dragon, and they're all pretty darn good. So there's this, there's this giant guy named Arachnid, where he's like, uh, "Put your hands up where I can see him." He's like, "Police, ha! Ooh, Arachnid scared. The police are going to get Arachnid. They're going to beat up Arachnid and take him to jail." Yeah, right. Arachnid's got pieces of guys bigger than you in his fecal matter. Um, so, uh, we get a good, uh, you know, superhero fight here, uh, and then he gets electrocuted. I guess he did the whole third wire, uh, type of thing. 
Um, and uh, then we start getting into the subplots. Uh, you know, this is back to classic thing. You got the A plot fighting the villain, and you got the B and C plots introducing new characters. One of the uh, one of the the tropes uh, from the very beginning of this. It's so it's kind of shocking to say right now, since there's essentially almost no heterosexuality in Marvel comics, and and barely anyone dates. And if they do, they're in these really weird toxic relationships, like bat cat. But um, how do I say this? Um, politely, sensitively, yeah, Savage Dragon used to beat up them guts, like, just constantly, in every issue, and all the women were extremely attracted to him, because he was different, because he was muscular, because he was interesting, um, uh, so that was kind of one of his superpowers, beating up them guts, um, but, uh, you're seeing, we're seeing this, uh, super patriot, a lot of them were kind of, another girl hitting on him, um, all of these uh, new characters. You know how I always talk about, it's like, how come no one robs banks? Well, people would do that. You would have serial killers. You would have hostage situations. It was like classic crimes. You have a nice little uh, uh, pinup right there um, in the center. Uh, and um, that printing didn't quite come off on that right there. But yeah, you can see it's like classic action, fun action. But then there's also this inventive like sly sense of humor, great designs on the characters. Um, uh, and, uh, it was just like fun, good cliffhangers. Okay. So <laughs> this is just a little bit. I love doing this. Okay. So now John Strauss was probably about 12 when he draw this, but you know, he's like 50 right now. So I don't feel bad about making fun of him. John, John, what, wh what is this design? What is this? I'm gonna have him say Broadway. Broadway! Okay, so he's gonna say Broadway. So let, let's just talk about this. This this is much too large. It should be, it should be going right, right, right here. You need to have a center line. It goes through the head, to the spine, to the pelvis. This is not that bad, but this, you're doing, you're doing contrapostal, you know, you need to do it more. So contrapostal would be like, the shoulders up there, the hips would go more down and then it would be like this. So you would have this, you know, out like here. Arm is actually okay, but the arm is better drawn than every other thing in this whole. You're, you're not getting the, for, the foreshortening on the roundness of the skull quite uh, correct. It's actually a fairly good hand, but you really need to bump up the shoulder some more. And uh, the foot actually needs to come out so you can see that it's a foot. So take that, John Strauss age uh eight years old in 1992 and then this one was even better like this one is a straight up classic i remember rereading this and especially back when i was like doing samples for like marvel comics and stuff like that um this one would always be on my desk as an example of like good superhero uh drawing so we get this great um intro of an awesome looking villain who just gets like double page spread taken out um even throwaway villains would get a good scene, an awesome name, and a good design. Then there's this guy named Overlord. And I gotta tell you, Overlord is fascinating. He was presented as kind of, you know, just like a, a, a I don't know, mob boss in armor. Pretty standard. And then at one point, like, I don't know, three years later, he gets knocked out of a skyscraper, falling to his death. And while he's falling, you get flashbacks to his entire life. And it totally enriches the character and makes everything even better. And then he hits the ground to die. I'm pretty sure he comes back later. But the other thing you can see is it's it's a good mix of like visual, get you in, mostly visual. And then, okay, so now we're getting to the plot. Now we're going to, you know, chew through some exposition. Here's a cool, this is a, uh, these vertical panels really kind of disappeared from comics. Um, uh, but this is a real good way to introduce, you know, do a, Establishing shot of a skyscraper. Okay, so we get these vertical panels. Very powerful. This is like a There was a lot of competition for 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 uh, Yeah, for officer dragon um, his uh, services um, Again, one of the things I was thinking about is just knowing how I don't know I'd say borderline extremist uh, Eric Larson's politics are right now um, is that like, it was just Normie. One of the things about Savage Dragon that was so interesting is he was like, he's a total Bruce Willis character. He's like a sardonic everyman. He just kind of rolls with the punches. Like, you know, it's very like, you know, the, the press is just trying to cause all these controversies and, 
you know, um, very antagonistic towards him. Um, then he gets attacked by uh, Bedrock, who became Bad Rock like a year later because of a uh, cease and desist. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so, so Bedrock is like a kid of like twelve who can um, who got transformed into this monster. So he still talks like a kid. He's like, "Ha! Look at that fin on your head. Too cool." So what are you, an alien or something? What? You've got to be the weirdest looking police officer I've ever seen. Get up. Let me see what you're made of. So then they get in a fight. And uh, yeah, another little poster. So then he's like, uh, the dragon says, beating the crap out of you will be my pleasure. Bedrock says, give me a break. We've saved the world a gazillion times. And our toy line is radical. You're just jealous because nobody wants to mass market your stupid fin-headed likeness. Me and the rest of the young blood are role models. Kids totally dig us, and we're making the world a better place. So then he does this like parody of Spawn. He's a, he does the Spawn style um, lettering, and then uh, they're actually they don't care about Spawn. They just want to see uh, Savage Dragon on TV. Um, this is the part that I love. So the, the the fight goes underwater. Great fun fight scene. Little subplot intro, and then he's like. Um, Okay, okay, that's enough, all right? Stop, okay? Knock it off, you dork. Jeez. He goes, okay, I stopped. Now, what the hell was that about? He goes, take it easy, man. I just wanted to see if you're tough enough to join Youngblood. And then <laughs> Savage Dragon, look at that double page spread. That is freaking awesome. Um, and he goes, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And uh, Bedrock says, it happens all the time in Marvel Comics. And he goes, are you out of your mind? You picked a fight with me and caused thousands of dollars in property damage just to see if I was tough enough to go to your silly pajama party? He goes, I'm sorry. I, he's like, can I go now? I was like, hell no, you're under arrest. So another girl tries to get him to beat it up. Then he gets uh, uh, you know, bonded out uh, on bail. And um, these were like celebrity heroes, so they were kind of above it all. So he's like... Um, Thanks for getting me out of jail, guys. That dragon dude is a real jerk. Fixing the damage is going to set you back a few bucks, Bedrock. And then uh, Die Hard's like, Shaft is right. You should be more careful. Uh, so then we get some more subplot stuff. I mean, come on. Look at this guy. Look at that guy. Um, uh, the, uh, the, he also... One of the things I was also thinking is, like, man, like... Uh, Eric Larson was really writing... He was really setting up well this, you know image universe so we we get references to young blood we get references to uh cyber force spawn and i don't think wildcats had even come out yet um i think it was just about to come out but um uh it was a real like viable comic book universe and then it all just kind of i don't know i wouldn't say it fizzled out right away image comics especially the Wildstorm comics which was jim lee's uh imprint um that went well into the late 90s with some really great and then Wildstorm even had like the authority into the early 2000s so that Jim Lee ran things the best that's why he was bought up by DC and he's you know uh, I don't know what his title is right now um, ankle level sales technician <laughs> got him um, but anyway great stuff and like I said it's it's really just kind of tragic just what happened to Eric Larson in his career he's effectively something below an asterisk uh, right now uh, I know he's doing the end, Captain America, that comes out in a couple weeks. And I guess, uh, and it, it, we've seen his just his just sloppy trash art. He he did a Spider Man a couple months ago, so yeah, tragically uh, kind of uh, still alive, but um, gone. So anyway, uh, if you can find any of the Savage Dragons from especially the first two years, they are absolutely amazing. I've been told by people that. It held up quite strong throughout the nineteen end of the nineteen nineties, and then it just became something he just kind of just had to get out. It, he, now he's just doing it out of to impress no one, to impress himself. Has he even hit that goal yet? Nobody cares. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.